Fora TV. The world is thinking. And the American paradigm is very interesting because it was started off with uh, people call it separation of church and state. I mean, actually, the First Amendment talks about not establishing a religion and ensuring the free exercise of, of religion. But as you know, in the early part of the years of the Republic, for many people, that was a neutrality between different, really, I would say, let's push it farther, different Protestant Christian churches. I mean, I was going to say different Christian churches, but it was the beginning of Catholics you know, looked at rather scant. So it was different Protestant churches. And you find, actually, interesting things which may surprise people today. The famous judge story in the 1820s of the Supreme Court, who said, well, I mean, of course, there can't be any identification of the uh, Republic with any church. But that doesn't mean that we can't have a strong identification with religion. And this is a Christian country. And then later on in the, in the century, there was actually a move by some people to put an, an amendment in the American Constitution making clear that this was a Christian country. And it's that phase of the, there was then resistance to that on the part of Catholics, Jews, people who called themselves secularists. See, the, the word began to be used in that, that context to fight back against that, and that fight won out, and therefore you have the present situation that you have uh, in the United States. But it didn't just happen automatically through the separation of church and state, right? because this had to be defined in quite other terms, in terms of a real all around, all direction, if you like, neutrality or even handedness between all these different positions. And that point was won through a battle in which the word secular arose in a rather polemical context, right? fighting against that idea that America is a Christian country and should declare itself to be so. And then if we look at the, at the French case, much more obviously, we all know that history, that you have a would-be hegemonic church and the fighting back against that and the battle between the Republicans and the Catholic right and so on. So clearly the whole point of the operation of, of laicite was to put a bulwark, a boundary against this hegemonic move and so on. So the, here you have two cases in which the word secular bubbles up. I mean, secular or laic, I'm sorry, I'm using these words for the moment interchangeably and they aren't really, but take them as analogous words. You get these words bubbling up in a context of polemic against uh, religious, potential religious domination, right? So it's quite clear that in that case, the application of principles like freedom of freedom of expression and so on, should be conceived in a contest with, with religion. But the point I'm trying to make is that there's nothing, there's no intrinsic connection here. It makes sense in those contexts. But there are other contexts in which it doesn't make this kind of sense at all. And of course, I have also to name some, another debt I have, the work of Rajiv Bhargava, in his commentary on Indian secularism makes that very clear. There, the starting point is not a hegemonic religion or hegemonic church trying to take over. No, it's the existence of this pervasive and important religious, metaphysical, and other diversity and difference. And the whole point of the secular regime was to precisely ensure freedom and even-handedness. That was, you could see that from the very beginning of that uh, that operation. So in a way, the Indian case is, to me, an example of where this other kind of definition I'm proposing makes sense. But it's also, in a certain sense, a reflection of the generic situation. That is, a situation that isn't marked by a particular issue of a hegemonic religion.